This lecture describes one of several possible hash-based indexing strategies for databases. The lecture assumes that you've watched my earlier B plus tree indexing videos, though the dependence between these structures is not great. More importantly, the video assumes you've had an introduction to standard hashing. Just as B plus trees are a special kind of search tree designed with slow disk access in mind, extendable hashing is too. In particular, you can think of extendable hashing as designed to minimize the cost of rehashing. If you don't know what rehashing is, that shouldn't be a problem, though. This slide shows the hash table on the left, highlighted in blue. The bins or buckets to the right are formatted much like B plus tree leaves. Each bin contains search keys together with associated information indicated by asterisks. Just as the roots of a B plus tree are typically stored in main memory, while the rest of the nodes are stored on disk, the hash table, in this case, is stored in main memory as well, and the bins are stored on disk. As indicated in the top left, I assume the hash function simply returns the key being hashed, though this is just for an example. It's a terrible hash function in general. The locations of an extensible hash table correspond to the least significant bits of the binary representation of the search keys. In this example, it is the two least significant bits. The fact that we distinguish keys by the two least significant bits is indicated by the global depth of two, as shown at the top of the hash table. You can verify that the decimal 12 would hash to location 00, zero and therefore the first or top bin, while 5 hashes to zero, 01, with a pointer to the second or middle bin. Notice that decimal 15 hashes to 11, which also points to the second or middle bin. Finally, in the bottom bin, you'll see a decimal 10, which in binary, coincidentally, ends in 10. Over each bin, you'll see what is called the local depth of the bin. The top bin has a local depth of 2, as does the bottom bin. The middle bin has a local depth of 1. The local depth of a bin indicates the number of least significant bits shared by all bin members. So all keys in the top bin agree in the two low order bits, 0, 0 in this case. No surprise here given what we just summarized about how we hash to each bin. The interesting case is the middle bin with a local depth of 1. All these bin members share the single low order bit all are odd in this case. It is because the local depth of the middle bin is less than the global depth that there are two pointers to the middle bin. Both keys that end in 0, 01 and those that end in 11 one, hash to the bin that contains all and only keys that end in a single one. We'll see the significance of this shortly. Suppose we want to insert an 18. It hashes to 18 using our stupid hash function, and the binary representation of 18 ends in 10. This takes us to the bottom bin in the slide. There is room in this bin, so we place 18 and its associated information there. Now, if we want to insert 20, you can verify that this hash is to 00, zero and the top bin, but this bin is full. What do we do? This bin holds keys that are identical on the last two bits. So, if we split this bin and repartition the keys based on commonality along the three low order bits, we can hope to distinguish these keys. The keys that were in the 00, zero bin of the earlier table are now split across two bins, one of which is the reused original bin highlighted in blue and pointed at by the 000 location of the new hash table. The other bin is dynamically allocated and pointed at by the 100 location of this new hash table. Because two bins are now distinguished by three bits, we must double the hash table to eight locations as well, with a global depth of three. Note that except for the bins that resulted in the split, all other bins remain unchanged and have local depths less than the global depth. But now, each of these other bins have twice the number of pointers to them than they did previously. Now let's consider inserting a 7 followed by a 21. You might take a moment to decide where these should go. Both these keys, 7 and 21, will hash to different locations as shown in the top left of the slide. 
but both locations 111 and 101 point at the same bin of odd numbered keys. The 7 can be placed there, but that will fill the bin, and adding the 21 will force the bin to split as shown on the right. Notice that in this case, however, because the local depth was less than the global depth, the hash table need not be doubled, but we simply must update pointers now to two different bins, one holding the odd keys ending in 01 and the other holding the odd keys ending in 11. We've seen example insertions where the key fits on its respective bin, and two cases where the key doesn't fit. If the local depth is less than the global depth, we must simply split the full bin, redistribute the keys, and update pointers. If the local depth equals the global depth, we must also double the number of hash table locations. It should be evident by now that a bin's local depth will never exceed the hash table's global depth. Here is yet another problem. Insert a 28 followed by a 44 and restart the video when you think you have it or want some help. You need not draw the entirety of the new table, which might become pretty complicated. Go ahead and pause the video now if you want. Both 28 and 44 hash to the same location, exceeding the corresponding bin's capacity, so the bin must be split and the hash table doubled in size. Pause in order to draw the two bins that result from the split and otherwise complete the insertions. The figure on the right shows the two bins resulting from the split. And this shows the final result after inserting 28 and 44 with all pointers updated. Here is the final problem. Take time to insert 6 followed by 33, restarting the video when ready. The bottom left shows the result after inserting 6. The rightmost hash table is the result after inserting the 33. As with B plus trees, there is much we haven't described, such as deletion and bulk loading. But nonetheless, you now have enough to appreciate what happens under the hood of hash-based indexing schemes.